My name is Florian Musso. I'm talking about the history of industrialization in construction. Industrialization in construction is an old theme linked to subjects like prefabrication, uh, uh, as has been said, um, industry. Um, it's also linked to flexibility and to systems. So I've been writing a book on um, system and um, systems building and what you are listening to uh, in these 10 lectures uh, is the content of this book. So, history of industrialization in construction, our theme. I am standing right next to a car and as you can see this car is a Ford. Henry Ford was one of the pioneers of industrial production and he uh, sort of introduced the production chain where cars were not produced one by one anymore but in a series of examples on an assembly line. So by introducing the assembly line he was able to cut costs and pay higher wages to his employees and um, the price of Ford Model T's, this was the model uh, where he used a platform strategy as well, um, descended and descended. As you can imagine, higher wages on one side and uh, lower prices for the products on the other led to the fact that now industrial workers could afford to buy cars. So that was a revolutionary idea. And um, people were asking themselves, is it possible to translate this idea to the building sector? So the basic idea is, how can we take the advantages that were realized in automobile production through industrial production, which is uh, increased quality, lower prices, um, specialized workforce. How can we translate this to the building sector? Behind me there's a building and you can see that this building was made out of brick and then there's plaster on this. So large part of the building process took place on the construction site. And so the automobile, all the production took place in a factory. So building site, bricks piled one on the other with mortar and then stucco on top of it. So all this on the building side and the automobile all in the factory. So how can we manage to introduce the advantages of automobile production in the building sector? And this is the subject of uh, this lecture. So in the building behind me, certain parts of the building were realized in situ and other parts were prefabricated in a workshop and then taken to the building site and assembled on the building site. Same principle is visible in the building behind me and the question is are we capable of enlarging this principle to the whole building instead of applying it to certain parts of the building only. So behind me the architect has been using gangways from uh, Munich airport as a corridor between one part of the building and the other and these were prefabricated elements made for another purpose and then taken to this building site and uh, so it's a process of prefabrication and uh, these prefabricated elements were capable of fulfilling another function than the initial utility. So behind me is, a, is another Ford, and this Ford might have the same engine than the first one we saw. And uh, it uses certain platforms and elements in these platforms are interchangeable. So what platform could be the chassis and uh, another platform could be the engine mount. And then I could have one engine delivering 100 horsepower and another 200. They can be changed inside this uh, production system. So Henry Ford was one of the first to apply this sort of systematic. He used one chassis, one engine, one color at the beginning, and uh, this allowed him to have the ideal industrial production. 
So cars are relatively small and buildings, as for example this one, are much bigger. So it is difficult to produce the buildings in a factory and then take them to the construction site because they are so big. And cars are mobile, automobile, and buildings are immobile, real estate. So. So how to deal with this? And the uh, solution is to cut the building into elements and then to take these elements, prefabricate them in a factory, take them to the building site, assemble them on the building site and um, thus be able to um, take bigger parts of the uh, assembly process to uh, the factory and away from the construction site. So here we deal with a degree of prefabrication and the bigger the parts that I'm assembling on the building site are, the higher normally the degree of prefabrication will be. If I have a construction container used on building sites, this would be a whole spatial unit, a high degree of prefabrication. If I'm taking a brick to the construction site, that's a rather low degree of prefabrication. So a high degree of prefabrication normally means a high degree of industrialization as well. And if I'm assembling small parts like bricks or pebbles or whatsoever on the building site, then the degree of prefabrication industrialization would be rather low. So if I have a high degree of prefabrication, uh, the transport will be rather difficult because the elements that I am assembling are getting bigger. If I have a low degree of prefabrication, simple transport, I can have a pile of bricks, uh, no problem. So a building made out of spatial cells would be almost entirely made in the factory. And a building made out of bricks would be almost entirely be assembled on the construction site. So this is what we are treating in this lecture. The uh, dichotomy between the factory on one side and the construction site on the other and how to shift more parts of the production process to the factory. So the brick is produced industrially as well, but the degree of prefabrication is rather low. Um, we cannot avoid prefabrication in construction, but we can um, have an influence on the degree of prefabrication. And uh, if we increase the degree of prefabrication, we are supposedly going to have uh, advantages in terms of salaries, in terms of build quality, and um, well, this is the subject of this uh, conference.